One of the greatest attractions in watching films from around the world is experiencing a view into other cultures. The landscapes, cities, streets, homes and faces across countless countries and through time. You become subsumed into locations you've never been to and are entirely ignorant of. With films that are really engrossing you might even start to misguidedly feel as if you have a familiarity with the place's aesthetics and maybe even its character or cultural identity even though you've only experienced it vicariously through a refracted subjective presentation, a constructed and stylized mirror of an entire culture and history. Edward Yang's Taipei story is a particularly seductive example. The genius of the film is that Yang's fluid perspective on the city of Taipei saturates, characterizes and propels every significant, dramatic and aesthetic aspect of his film to the forefront. He constructs his own vision of the city and all that it signifies about the people who occupy it. The effect is perhaps particularly compelling for foreign viewers who have no outside context to compare or question Yang's own version with. Yang grew up in Taipei from the age of two, however Taipei Story is only his second film and he made it after spending most of the 70s in America, studying electric engineering at the University of Florida and then working as an accomplished computer engineer in Seattle. Upon finally returning to the city, his newfound outsider's eye would be a great asset and has been much touted in both the development of the film and even the Taiwanese new wave generally by co-writer and lead star Hu Shaoshen, who said, When Yang came back from the US, after studying there for so long, he saw the meaning behind everything. He had a penetrating vision of the meaning behind the city of Taipei. The somewhat modest dramatic construction of the film centres around the relationship between Lung and Chin, childhood friends turned lovers who are trapped at a crossroads in their lives and relationship. Lung has been trying to get into a business partnership with his brother-in-law in America, with a view to eventually move there with Chin, who meanwhile finds herself out of a job and drifts into experiencing a freer, modern youth lifestyle through her younger sister. Both Lung and Chin inwardly wonder about the substance and longevity of their relationship, and look at other potential partners with some ambiguity. Throughout the film there is a constant existential malaise, the sense that these characters do not even really know themselves, are both unable to find self-expression for what they actually desire, or to know whether their future lies together or apart. The film's minimalist and anti-dramatic style in narrative and performance has an enveloping realism that submerges characters into their very environment. Locations are pointedly reflective of both internal character conflict and broad national changes. Before Yang's camera the city assembles itself, and morphs from moment to moment to illustrate his point of view. He sees Taipei as situated uneasily between tradition and a quickly emerging modernity that is expanding the lifestyle choices available, and perhaps even transforming the spiritual character of the social fabric. Lung and Chin are positioned as a middle generation, uncertain in this rapidly fragmenting milieu, and contrasted alternatively between Chin's parents and her younger sister's clique. Yang subsumes the situations of these two characters, who are torn between familial ties, perceived economic responsibility and indistinct existential aspirations, into the texture and design of the city, which is alternately both new and crumbling, inhuman and imbued with lived experiences. A sense of place is constantly reinforced by a largely diegetic soundscape that eschews clean dialogue dubbing or a musical score in favour of the everyday sound of the city. Lung and Chin's new apartment, the long inspection of which opens the film, giving notice of its significance, sits in the middle of a modest sized block. It is very literally situated between the transitory young group who inhabit the top of an abandoned high rise in a bustling central street, and Chin's parents who live in a traditional style house situated in an older part of the city. Yang emphasises how disparate these places are, enshrouding old architecture in constant shadow and gloom, and emphasising the cluttered interiors, themselves divided into ever smaller spaces with its traditional elements, the blurred room dividers, versus the open bright areas of modern office buildings and apartments. Yang casts the ageing sections of Taipei's architecture as emblematic of an economic and social reality that is quickly retreating into the shadows, belonging only to the purview of nostalgia. This is a recent past, but one that is quickly becoming remembered only by the old, and is otherwise enshrouded in obscurity to a younger generation, which doesn't relate to it or actively rebukes it, preferring instead a reformist and transformative age where the past has little relevance. As the film progresses, it's increasingly clear that Lung is overwhelmingly preoccupied with the past. He reminisces on his days playing baseball in high school with his coach, takes a morbid interest in the life of a former teammate, and still has feelings for his teenage sweetheart. Most symbolically, he has a quiet fascination for the nostalgic stories of Chin's father, and goes to great lengths to help bail him out of his self-induced debt. Lung even gives over the money saved for his and Chin's new life in America to Chin's father, acting as a surrender to his trepidation and misgivings about the future. Lung is therefore framed either in these ageing environments with Chin's father, or in the spaces of his childhood, such as the baseball field and the playground. In particular, the old spaces of Chin's family home and workshop takes on a kind of malevolence, as Lung is trapped by his self-assumed responsibility to Chin's father due to what he embodies in Lung's mind, much to Chin's confusion and chagrin. He is enveloped in the shadows of the past, 
and his future is in danger of becoming subsumed by fixations of missed possibilities. Meanwhile, Chin is struggling to acclimate to losing her job, which initiates a similar crisis of confidence in her relationship with Lung and their future together. She explores an alternate lifestyle through her time with her sister and considers, to an ambiguous extent, the prospect of an affair with an unhappily married co-worker. Chin's existential crisis is a distinctly modern one, focused on options to expand and explore her independence as a rebuke to the patriarchal attitudes of her father and her mother's consequent subservience. She has been seeking her emancipation through a modern career in Taiwan's rapidly growing technology sector. But just as Lung has trepidation about abandoning the past, Chin does not seem entirely at home in pure capitalist ambition. Once again, we can infer this as much from the way Yang frames the city around her as lost in identical rows of columns or floors, gutted and dehumanizing buildings, as by anything she says or by the very subtle acting choices made throughout. Yang, uncharacteristically, tips his hat on this point specifically during a scene early in the film in which Chin's unhappy co-worker remarks on the homogeneity of the city's new skyline, including buildings that he had designed himself. Yang's use of a lingering POV shot suggests that Chin is internalizing the sentiment, influencing her later on Wii. Although this architect should be a capitalist success story, he is now hollow inside, and his work is not only creatively stultifying, but has even come to bring him displeasure. For Chin, he represents a cautionary example for the pursuit of a modern career. While she could be freed from patriarchal traditions and forge an emancipated new cosmopolitan and independent lifestyle, as permitted by the modernization of Taipei, she could also fall prey to a stratified life characterized by corporate dehumanization. Meanwhile, as the film progresses, it becomes clearer and clearer that Lung could never leave Taipei. His identity is still defined by a childhood synonymous with the city. Eventually, Lung is killed by a representative of the new generation, a member of the teenage group who has developed a youthful crush for Chin. It seems Lung could not abandon or adapt to the changing Taipei in time, but it overtook him. Whilst Chin ends the film looking out across the city, once again into an uncertain future, perhaps to succumb to the existential malaise that is devouring the architect. And so ending on a contextless image of Taipei's new architecture, refracting the passing traffic below, we are now seeing Taipei as Yang sees it, regardless of its reality. Yang has built the city for us, a frame at a time, and given us both the thematic material and space to construct meanings from his perspective of it. Ultimately positing Lung and Chin as looking alternately to the past or future demonstrates Yang's own conflicted outlook. Oftentimes he seems to interrogate his own ambivalence. His so-called stranger's eye beholds them as products of their environment, inextricable. This is what makes Taipei's story mesmerizing. By the end, we no longer need the wide angles and establishing shots. Just a full frame of refracting glass windows conjures the geography, connotations, and emotional dynamics of the physical, social, and spiritual nature of a city we've likely never been to at a time we were perhaps not even alive for.